I had a grandfather who was a coach. He was a track coach. And he was also a very good athlete. I just admired him and watching him coach and going to meets with him. It was really interesting. He taught me a lot. I had also worked as a camp counselor when I was in my teens. And that's when I knew I wanted to work with kids and it didn't matter to me what age. When you were a student, who was your favorite teacher and what made them special? First of all, I had a 10th grade history teacher. His name was Ed Linder. He would teach us a lot about basic living, just, just what it's like to be an adult, to be a human being in the world. He had us call him Ed, which I went to school in the 70s, so that was very unusual then. And I also had the, the man that I really admire, I still am friends with to this day. He was a science teacher at my high school. He it was also my track coach, and it was unusual at the time because I was a shot putter and a discus thrower. It was very unusual that I lifted free weights. I did these things in the 70s that are really normal today. But he, he always pushed me, but gently. Share your teaching experiences. What grade or subject did you teach? Where and how long? Oh gosh, where shall I begin? I'll go back to the beginning. So in the mid 80s, I lived in the woods with juvenile delinquent boys. I worked with kids that, if, you, if any of you know, it was called Presley Ridge Wilderness School. And we lived in the outdoors year round. We had no electricity, we had no plumbing. We would not have classes per se, but for example, we had to eat six meals out every week outside. We had to cook it on an open flame and they had to budget their meals so they could pick what they wanted. That was for a year. I was in Massachusetts. I taught for four and a half years up there in middle school. And then I moved back here and taught down at All Saints in Etna. I worked there for two years. And then in the mid nineties, I got a job here. And I had, was here for 24 years. Throughout all those years, I taught K through 12, not eight, K through 12. How did you find the time to be so active within the school community? I had children in the school, so that sort of helped me, uh, starting at Fairview and then the middle school and then the high school. I felt as a teacher I also needed to be part of the community as well. I will admit that when they came through here I never went to homecoming or prom because they wouldn't allow me. But yeah, I, I taught both of my kids in class, which I thought was hilarious when students would ask, if it was illegal that I taught my own children. Because I taught health and phys ed, so. Tell me about your favorite lesson or unit or activity. Probably in the classroom, my favorite towards the end was mental health. I would start the class out at the beginning of the semester with relaxation and meditation. And we got into, this is right before COVID hit, and we would get to the point where it would be a 15 to 20 minute meditation and everybody in the class took part. My favorite, so it was the mental health unit, was my favorite, always. And in the gymnasium, probably my favorite was badminton. And I did enjoy teaching fencing too, but badminton was probably my favorite because everyone thought they were gonna be doing just hitting it back and forth like you do, and it got pretty competitive, so it was a lot of fun. What is the funniest or most entertaining moment you remember from your years in the classroom? I hate to say this, but it was, I had a student, he's probably in his late 30s now. It, to this day, when he sees me, he still remembers. Um, it's a terrible thing because it was him getting injured, and he was running, just if I could have had it on video, it was hilarious. He was running in for a tennis, it, out in the tennis courts, and he was running in for a shot and he went down on his knees and slid like three feet into the net. It's terrible to say that somebody's demise, like a terrible thing that happened to him, he still has scars on his knees when he sees me. I've only seen him twice since he's graduated and he immediately brings that up. And the fact that I laughed when it happened. <laughs> During your time as a teacher, what is the biggest change you've witnessed in the profession? That was easy. Um, I started teaching in the mid 80s. So you work through time in history. I taught through Columbine. 
I taught through 9-11, and probably the biggest change I saw was when the mass shootings started to increase. And I was in the cafeteria learning from, uh, I think it was UPMC that came in, and they were teaching us about mass shootings. And we were practicing putting the gauze in wounds. Uh, we were given go bags, which I knew at that point. And I work for the Red Cross. I'm a certified instructor. I taught lifeguarding here too. So like I, I do the first aid and the CPR. And it just struck me like we are in a completely different place now when I had to carry this go bag with a tourniquet in it. And I will add that the administration was not really happy when I stood up in a faculty meeting once instructing teachers how to use the tourniquet and telling them that if they ever had to use one, they never would just use one. They would need five or six. How have advances in technology, such as the internet and smartphones, impacted you during your teaching career? I always embraced it. When I came here, we had an old Apple that was off for so long the battery died. So I had the battery replaced and I was always trying to be in the new way of teaching, use it, not put it away. So students could have it on their desks and I was always finding a way in my lesson in the classroom to, um, to use it. So we would, even if it was part of the class or at the end of the class, it was just part because it's part of your everyday living. How did you handle challenging or disruptive students in a way that turned their behavior around? You could say that I learned a lot living in the woods with juvenile delinquent boys. <laughs> so I learned to remove myself emotionally um, and know that this was a child, and I don't mean to put down by saying child, but even a teenager, and just saying they don't know yet. And then working when it wasn't the heat of the moment or a challenging time, working with them and asking them what they, you know, what they were getting out of it. Was it working for them? You spent decades working with young people. What did you learn from students you worked with? When I wasn't cool anymore, <laughs> I learned when I was kind of cool, I should always be looking forward, not being stuck, not saying I'm this age, so this is how I should be. I have children of my own, which also helps. When they were in their mid-20s and I was working with 15-year-olds, there's you know the new generation coming up and you're still learning. I was always learning, always, what the, what the new thing was, the dress was always another thing, going another direction, the music. How did being a teacher influence how you coached or vice versa? Accepting everyone for where they were. When you come into a classroom or when you come onto the field or into the pool, I'm meeting you where you are. So if you tell me you're not a good swimmer, well, I wanna see that first. You probably are a decent swimmer. In your mind, you're comparing yourself to someone else. It's sort of like when you don't get a concept in the classroom and the kid next to you is saying, oh, this is so easy, and you don't get it. I don't think that's really fair to, to, for them to just be blurting that out because for some, it's not easy. So just trying to, I got this, sometimes you get it, sometimes it's a little more of a struggle, but meeting you where you are. And that, again, that goes to behavior, that goes to um, special needs, that goes to any, any aspect of living, Be, being a teenager is very confusing. What are the most important qualities of a great educator? Patience, compassion, empathy. I think those are the understanding and listening and hearing what is said, not just, you know, really, really hearing it and then l like putting it, taking it in, waiting a moment. And, and one more thing, don't lead with no. I never like to lead with a no if I was asked something. What was the most challenging part of being a teacher? Well, I get in trouble if I say <laughs> the paperwork, the expectations. When I left, when I retired, it was amazing to me. I taught for 33 years and it was amazing to me to look back on how all of my years went. Um, it took about six months to decompress from teaching and I'd say that it was the administrative expectations and the state expectations of knowing that you're trying every day really, really hard 
and people and some still criticizing. And I think sometimes, sometimes the parents, but not always, because I was part, and I was part of the community too. What was the most rewarding part of being a teacher? Kids, students, just every day being different, every day coming in, somebody had some triumph, somebody had a terrible thing happen, somebody had, I could call it a crisis, somebody just wanted to see you, somebody didn't want to see you. <laughs> no, that, I shouldn't say that. Yeah, that, there's just students, it was the students. If you could give one piece of advice to parents, and the general public about the importance of teachers and educators, what would it be? Trust the teachers. You have hired a wonderful group of people throughout the whole district. They are committed, they love what they do, and they should be given the reins to be creative, to try and better the community, the students that come through here, so that they're prepared to move on for the parents trusting the teachers and also becoming part of the community, like making it a two-way street. How has teaching influenced your life outside of the classroom and how have your experience as a teacher shaped who you are today? It has shaped me by, um, I think that I'm a, a compassionate person. I think I'm empathetic. I love meeting new people all the time. I have a very diverse group of friends right now, uh, more so than I did when I was teaching because I would come here every day and it was you know, the same crew that you work with all the teachers, which was great, but I now have a very diverse group. Students shaped me, which in return made me seek out more friends, more activities. I've always been a traveler and an adventurer. I've always been somebody who loves the outdoors. So I, have, I just continue to do that. What advice would you offer to a first year teacher? Take a breath, <laughs> just breathe. And you will get through day at a time and it will get easier. Um, remember, these are all children <clears throat> of people who love them. So even when they're being their absolute best or their absolute worst, <laughs> they belong to somebody. So if they want to be understood. What would you like to say to former students watching this video? I, I'm still in touch with quite a few students who are anywhere between mid-20s up to probably in their 40s now. I'm still in touch with some of them on social media. So I would, the ones that I don't see, a couple things. I do not think that you still behave like the 17-year-old you. And secondly, um, I'm always interested to hear how things are going, what you're doing, and where you're living. You know, just that I had a great time. I loved it. And especially when my own children were here, I felt like more my son, who was the goofball. I was always worried, but all of his friends were just phenomenal. And I taught every single one of them in the same health class, which was crazy.